you won't lose because the Lord, he's fighting. He's fighting. The Lord is fighting. Surrender. Surrender. And I promise you won't lose. Because the Lord is the Lord is fighting. It makes a difference when the Lord is fighting for you. I love it when the Lord is fighting for me. I don't have to do as much when the Lord is fighting. Yeah, God, I love you. I surrender. I surrender. Fight against those that fight against us. Stand up in our defense, God. Bless those that bless us and curse those that curse us, God. That's your word. That's what we stand on, God. Uh, reminds me of a message I preached called, I pity the fool. I pity the fool. Yeah. I pity the fool. Yes, God. Fade down song. I pity the fool. Hallelujah. Good God. I pity the fool. Yeah. Wow. That was all the Lord told me to say. He said, all he told me to say was, I pity the fool. Because the Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And so the thing of it is, is it's this simple, although it's made hard, but it's this simple. Anything that fights against God is literally saying there is no God. Or uh, this God has no power. It's literally what's being said. So the Bible says that a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. Because it means that I don't agree with or I don't believe in the God that has the capability to do anything. So I literally place myself as a fool. I position myself in the category of a fool. And so therefore, the Lord gave me that message, I pity the fool. See, I pity anyone that would say God is not the God of trim. I pity anyone that would say God is not Delphine's God. I pity anyone that would speak against the move of God. Pity in the form of saying, I stand in for you as an intercessor because you are in a bad place. <laughs> so I stand in for you, you know. I'm believing God. I pity you in the context that your cerebral cortex does not allow you to literally receive and perceive God as what you should. So I pity the fool that has said in their heart, there is no God. When literally, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Thank you. I shall repay. That's what he said. Thank so I pity the ones that would say, God is not their God. God is not with them. What? Oh my. Because behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. Oh man. He shows up to protect that that belongs to him. It's just this thing about making sure that we understand as people exactly who we are, one, whose we are, two, and who he is, three. <laughs> when you get them concepts right now, you are all right. You are right. When you know that if you speak it, when you know who you are, so you know that if you speak a thing or you decree a thing, the Bible says it shall be established, right? So then when I know who I am and I know that I have the ability to be able to speak to a mountain and tell that mountain to be thou removed and be cast in the midst of the sea and it's got to go, that means I know who I am. And when I know who I am, I know the power that I possess, you know? 
I know that I can speak to things and they got to move. I know that if I say it, then it shall be so. So I know who I am. Second, I know whose I am. I know that I belong to God and he belongs to me. I know that I'm the sheep of his pasture, right? So I understand that he is the shepherd. And so that means the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And I know that he leadeth me beside them still waters and also restoreth your girl's soul. And he ain't though, because sometime I got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm going to fear not a bit of evil. Why would you feel, Pastor? You ain't got no business fearing when the Lord is with you. Oh, my God. God has the ability to snap his fault. Jesus and change some things. Oh, it says if I cast out demons by my finger, it's what it says by his finger. He just pushed Satan by the head, just mush him, man, get out of here. And he got to go by his finger. So when you know whose you are, Lord, have mercy. And then third, you got to know who he is. When you know he is El Shaddai, when you know he is Lord Jesus, when you know he is king of kings, when you know he is strong, oh God, when you know he is the great I am, when you know he can't lose Jesus Christ, when you know he is Alpha and he's Omega, when you know that he is the bright and the morning star, when you know he is the captain of the ship and he's also the captain of the sea, when you know that he He's the ruler, good God. When you know he is the provider, when you know he's the son of redemption, when you know he's the emancipator, God, when you know these things about him, nothing can put you in a place. Oh, Jesus Christ of defeat. You can't do number win. <laughs> oh, you can't do nothing. But when <laughs> you can't do nothing but run like destiny, child, ain't that them that says I'm a survivor? <laughs> I'm not going to give up. What? <laughs> I'm going to work harder. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. Why? <laughs> because I got God. Lord, have mercy. I got God. Oh, Jesus. I, I keep telling y'all that the man is God when the lightning flashes. <laughs> and he's God when the thunder roars. <laughs> the man is God way up in heaven and done mess around and became God down in my soul. <laughs> Poor blank period. When he messed around and became God down in my soul, it was over for the world then baby. It was over then because a change, a change has come over me. <laughs> when he got down in my soul, what? Yeah. Or when he got down in my soul, what's your soul feed? My mind, emotions, and my will. When he messed around and became God in there, oh, oh, edgy, when he became God in there, it was trouble. You hear me? It was some real trouble when he became God in there. Now, as long as he was God externally, uh, they could still get me because I would fall for their tactics every now and then. But when he became God down in my soul, baby, when he got in my mind and I began to think about him, and when he got in my emotions and I began to feel him, and when he got in my will and he started guiding me, he got troubled in, baby. Oh, Jesus, they said, girl, how long you been in this? A while, sweetie, and I ain't tired yet. Jesus, I ain't tired yet. Oh, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. As the song says, I've been working for Jesus a long time. And I'm not tired yet. <laughs> Mark 5, I've been working for Jesus a long time. And God, I ain't tired yet. I love you, dude. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's my dude. That's my dude. He is my rock. The song says, I remember singing in my rock, my sword and shield. He is a will in the middle of a will. Oh boy, I will never. Lord have mercy. Oh God, 
I vow to always love you to the best of my ability, God. I vow to always love you to the best of my ability. God, I just want to love you, just want to serve you, just want to live for you for the rest of my days, God. I find no pleasure in the world as it relates to comparing to you. There is no comparison as it relates to you. There's some sweet things in this earth, but they are not sweeter than you. <laughs> There's also some good things in this earth, but it's not more good than you. There's also some pleasures in this earth, but they're not more pleasurable than you. <laughs> For you're sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. You are the sweetest thing that I know so far, God. I'm loving on you this morning because that's what I do. I'm loving on you just to make sure if nobody else has today that you know that I love you. Just to make sure that you know I favor you. Just to make sure that you know I honor you. I am loving on you today. I am worshiping you on today. If nobody else has told you you are amazing. And then little Delphine Lee wants to tell you this morning that you are amazing. If nobody else has told you today you're wonderful, then let me be the one to tell you you're wonderful. If nobody else today has told you they appreciate you, then let a little old Delphine tell you in our Alabama she appreciates you and she adores you. She's most grateful for you and for who you are and for who you have become and are becoming to her. She is so grateful and so humbled uh, uh, before you. She is uh, uh, delighted to be able to stand in your presence. Uh, she is honored to be called by you and to be chosen by you. She is honored to be handpicked by you. Uh, for you are greatest among everything. Uh, you are awesome among everything. If nobody else uh, has told you today that they love you, then let me be the first to say, I love you, Lord. I love you. Yes, I do, God. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you, Father. I love you. Yes, I do. If you haven't told him today, take an opportunity to tell him you love him. Oh, you will be, you'll be surprised what that can do. Oh, God, you'll be surprised what that does for him, how that makes him feel. It's something for the angels to tell him because the Bible says that the angels are crying holy all the time. They're constantly crying holy. But see, as humanity, we go in and out of the presence of God. And so when we make a decision to tell him we love him, it gets his attention. Wait, hold up just one minute. Then she just stop what she was doing to tell me she loved me. It yes. gets his attention. Yes. That's how he knew for a fact. Well, some, wait, hold up just a minute. Somebody don't touch me. He knew because it was a whole different thing in the way we worship him. It's a whole, oh Lord have mercy, it's a whole different scenario, y'all, yes. in how we worship him. Because see, the angels were created to worship him, but we were given a choice. Right. You don't have to. So when you do it, it does something to him. Mm -hmm. Because he know that you have made a decision beyond your circumstances, y'all. You made a decision beyond your circumstances. To tell him thank you. Huh? You made a decision beyond the fact that somebody in your family could be in the hospital right now. You made a decision beyond the fact that your heart could be grieving from a death right now. You made a decision beyond the fact that your bank account might not be what you want it to be right now. Oh God. You made a decision beyond the pain that you feel to tell him the uh -huh. You made a decision beyond every bit of that. So you know when you say something, hold up that one minute. Wait a minute. Hold up, what's she say? What? She, she could have been locked in that stuff. You know? Huh? She could have been locked in that pain. She could have been angry. 
Yeah, she could have been mad, you know. What? She could have. But she chose to say, Jesus! <laughs> so he said, wait a minute. You know I got the answer, huh? Wait a minute. She could have been just really buried in her circumstances. She could have let her circumstances got the best of her. She could have given up. You understand? She could have quit a long time ago. But she kept right on going. So you know, listen. Hey, hey, hold up just one minute, y'all. Keep saying it.